All right, welcome back to Anton Math, and we're going to talk about some of the properties of the Cartesian product in this video, namely commutative, associative, and distributive, like we have in the past with our other set operations. And for the most part, the Cartesian product doesn't have these properties, but there is a distributive property, which we'll talk about at the very end. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is commutative. Now, if we have s cross t and t cross s, in general, these are not going to be equal to each other. Now, we can make a trivial case, right? If t and s are the same set, then obviously s cross t is equal to s cross t. But if t and s are different sets, then this is not going to be true. And I'll go ahead and show a little example of why. Uh, let's say that my s is the set 1, 2, and my t is the set 3, 4. Then s cross t This is going to be 1, 3, 1, 4, 2, 3, 2, 4, and t cross s is going to be 3, 1, 3, 2, 4, 1, and 4, 2. Now in a certain sense, looking at s cross t to t cross s, they do have a correspondence in that I have the same number of ordered pairs, and I'm just kind of flipping the roles of each of the ordered pairs, right? I have 1, 3 here, so I have 3, 1, I have 1, 4, I have 4, 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 2, 4, 4, 2. However, because they are ordered pairs, the order here is very important. Even though in both of these sets I have pairs that are composed of the same values, uh, the order is different. So these elements themselves are not equal to each other, so these sets are not going to be equal. Okay? So we do not have a commutative rule for the cross product. We can't switch the role of s and t. The order here is very important. Now we also don't have a associative rule. right? If I have three sets r, s, and t, r cross s cross t, is not the same thing as r cross s cross t. right? The reason is that these are completely different structures. Uh, if I look at r cross s cross t, these parentheses matter. So what's happening here is I'm taking s cross t, and this is a set, and I'm taking the cross product between the set r and this new cross product set that I've generated. So this isn't the set of three tuples or anything like that. This is the set of elements where the first part of the ordered pair is R, and the second part of the ordered pair is itself an order paired, ordered pair ST. Right? There's only two elements in this ordered pair, but one of those elements is itself an ordered pair. Right? And this, of course, is where R is an R, S is an S, oh, S is an S. and t is in t. Right? I could also write this as r is in r, and the ordered pair st is in the cross product s cross t. Now on the other side, r cross s cross t, this is a set of, the, of ordered pairs where the first element in the ordered pair is an ordered pair rs. Right, so structurally, these aren't even the same. Right, Here I have a, let's say these are all sets of numbers. Here I'd have a number and then an ordered pair, and here I'd have an ordered pair and then a number in each element. Right, So again, where I'll write it differently this time, where rs is in r cross t, or sorry, r cross s, and t is in t. Okay, So we don't have a commutative law, and we don't have an associative law. Now we do, however, have a distributive law. We do not have a distributive law over cross products, but we have a distributive law over unions and intersections. So again, let R, S, and T be sets. I have that R cross the set S union T. This is going to be equal to R cross S union R cross T. 
right? So I can't I can't distribute the cross product over cross products, right? If this was s cross t, that wouldn't be the same as r cross s cross s cross t, right? For the same reasons that we kind of looked at before, we would have a different structure there. But if this is a union or an intersection, I can distribute the cross product. And we also have uh, with intersection r cross s intersection t is going to be equal to r cross s intersected with r cross t. Now we could confirm either of these using a truth table like we learned earlier, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, prove this first one for you directly. The second one would prove the exact same way, uh, just using the distributive laws that we have for propositions. So let's look at r cross s union t. All right, that's going to be all of these ordered pairs. We'll call it rm where r is an r and oh actually I'm not going to use a comma I'm going to use and m is in s union t okay now I can write that in equivalently in this way this is going to be all the all order pairs rm such that r is an r and m is in s or m is in t right this is the propositional equivalent to m being an element of s union t now i have a distributive law for propositions right you remember if i have uh, one proposition conjuncted with another proposition where um, the, that proposition is a disjunction i can distribute these propositions this is the same thing as rm such that r is in r and m is in s or r is in r and m is in t right i distribute this conjunction in this way from our properties of propositions. All right, now what is this? This is just the ordered pairs Rm such that Rm is in, now right here this gives me R cross S, doesn't it? Or rm and this piece right here is the same thing as saying that it's in r cross t right now when we have a propositional statement like this inside the set we know this is what we've defined to be the union so this is the same as r cross s union r cross t right so there's a direct proof just coming back to our our um properties of our propositional um, components. Um, but like I said before, we could use what we did with truth tables earlier this uh, chapter, and we could set up a truth table with both of these sets on it, and we could see that they would be equivalent um, by their columns in the truth table as well.